That's right. You've selected the number one podcast for you to listen to right now. Yes. Thank you for clicking on this episode with Rabbi Dr. Benji Epstein, Ph.D. Yes, he's a psychologist. He's a therapist. He's He's got the mindfulness stuff yeah. all down pat. He, he actually wrote a book, Living in the Presence. A Jewish mindfulness guide to everyday life. He also is the director of staff development at Camp Hask. You sound very sure of it. And clinical research. He's there for the staff in Camp Hask. Imagine being a counselor and dealing with, with what they deal with every single day, day in and day out. He's there to make sure they don't burn out. He's there for some, some of the talk to, you know. In his words, he puts out good juju. In, good juju in and, and fairy dust all over the place. But we had an amazing conversation. He's got such positive vibes and he's super smart. Yeah, he's... and. I feel kind of like our session with him was some form of session. A, you know, no, it was like some form of like therapy for us. No, yes. like it was really therapeutic. Just the don't, conversation don't, with him. Please don't bill us. <laughs> but it definitely was therapeutic, and I I hope it was for us as it will be for you. Yeah, that makes sense in the English. And language. once again, a big shout out to our friends at AMR Pharmacy, Yaakov. Yes, they delivered all my pills on time. And also a shout out to our friends at dailygiving.org. One dollar a day will change your life and the lives of so many people who are affected by the organizations that they support. One dollar a day. Welcome to the Meaningful People Podcast. The podcast where we talk to people who are... Meaningful. Yeah, that sounds good. We have the pleasure of sitting down with Doctor, Rabbi, Rabbi ben, Doctor, Rabbi Doctor Benji Epstein, <laughs> Benji. Um, but I spoke to you on the phone yesterday, and you're like, "Please call me Benji." Please call me Benji, or bro, or, or, du- or dude, or yeah. dude, yeah, uh, dude. Yeah. Do you tell everyone that? Um, I yeah, I think people. I want people to feel comfortable. I mean, there's there's some letters before my name, some letters after my name, but it really doesn't really make any difference. We're, we're gonna get into your book and so and your camp pass experiences and your life experiences. But first of all, take us back to where you're from, what your upbringing was like. Okay. I grew up in Miami Beach, Florida. I had a wonderful childhood. Hi, shout out to my parents. My dad's not listening, but my mom will tell him that I gave him a shout out. I had a wonderful <laughs> childhood. Went to Shalvin for a few years, went to Shiv University. I went, you know, the sort of like the modern Orthodox mm-hmm. track. And then uh, I ran away from Yeshiv University. I was uh, a class short of grad. Kids finish school. Stay in school. I was a class short, and I said, you know, I'm done with this. I went to Eretz Yisrael, and my wife to be uh, was also there. Uh, she had just, uh, you know, parted ways with her work, and she just, you know, on a whim went there as a, you know, to I think for a chasana, and we sort of met up there. And instead of staying in Eretz Yisrael for the rest of my life, I came back to America. We got married. I went to graduate school, got a PhD in psychology, and then we ended up back in Eretz Yisrael. That's 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 my life and. Uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. This was a great episode with you. Yeah. yeah we we hope you come back another time. So, okay. So wait, you got, you got your psychology degree. Yes. Did you, is that something? Around here, Hofstra. Well, they oh, really? used to be the Flying Dutchman, Respect, and then they became the Pride, which is- Hofstra like, Pride, yeah. Yeah. It's like, I don't know what that is, but it's, <laughs> I think it's a Pride of Lions. I would not be able to get into the program now. It's a fantastic program. I mean, and Siata de I was just talking on the way here. If I had interviewed with a different professor, because you don't, I mean, it's it's hundreds of applicants, and there's like eight spots or ten spots. And the person who I uh, interviewed with was a nice, he's a mensch, a really yid, and uh, he liked me. You know, he liked my little song and dance. <laughs> and uh, I was living in Riverdale, and I was driving to uh, to Hempstead every 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 day, saying not nice words under my breath <laughs> on the Cross Bronx Expressway. But it was it was it was an unbelievable. Uh, it's an unbelievable program, and I feel very a lot of from from yid in there. How many years is that schooling? Took me, it took me five and a half years, five and a half wow. years to, to with the dissertation. The dissertation was 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 where you really get stuck. You went hardcore. I did not even know what I was doing. I was just like, I, 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 okay, I'll, just, I'll be a psychologist because I, I don't want to be a rebbe. I like people. I like Jews. I like I like interacting with people. Might be a dumb question, but what's like the difference between like a, a therapist, and a psychologist? I don't know. I'm saying like, uh, semantics. Semant- I mean, a psychologist. You More have schooling. the degree. No, you have the degree. Right. You have the degree. Again, a part of there's definitely gaiva. There's definitely like a little bit like <laughs> like I'm a X PhD, Y and Z. PhD. You say yeah. P- you say PhD. It gets it gets you. It, you become a meaningful people. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna stay with that bit. I'm not gonna be a person. I'm gonna be a meaningful people. Yeah. But uh, no, I, the MS is I'm not. I'm not. I, I think I said this to you on 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 the phone call we spoke beforehand. I'm not. 
Um, I, I look at your lineup. Look at your lineup. Call it a vote. Stop. I yeah, will not. I, I, will not. I would say, listen. You, are you as famous as some of them? No, I not yet. I, don't I think I don't need, I'm not. I'm not, that's. I'm, that's it. I'm but saying. you're definitely meaningful, and 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 we've said. I am not a meaningful person per se. I mean, to my family, I am Bezrat Hashem, but I wrote a meaningful book, and that that I do believe in very so much. Let, so let's talk about your book. First of all, what what made you want to write the book? Authors typically have books that they feel that they need to write. This will show my kinetiva covered my and how small I, you know the mindful guru can be. Is I would have been so upset if someone else wrote the book that I wanted to write. And there's another beautiful book out. Shout out to my colleague Rabbi. I don't know if he's a rabbi, but De- Dr. Jonathan Feiner, brother of Rabbi Eitan Feiner, mm-hmm. who is a few years behind me at Hofstra, and also wrote a beautiful book on Judaism and mindfulness. It's probably downstairs. Check it out. Um, and we, we, he, he actually, he's such a mensch. He called me up and he said, you know, I'm writing a book on mindfulness. Now you're doing it. I was like, you do you. You're my boy. Is it after you came out with yours? Or? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, why you're saying you do you. He, and he's like, he's like, yeah, you do you. I, mean, yeah. I, I needed to do this. It, and, yeah. and, and, and they're, they're not the same. They're coming from a different sort of vantage. By, by nature, did you, did you, like the first second you heard about it, did you feel like, oh, it's competition? What's, no, not even at all. I love that guy. Wow. No, because it, it, it's, it's, it's no competition. Mm. Shem runs the world. Right again. If he had gotten it out before, I don't think I'd be as magnanimous. <laughs> like we're we're that's it. He's, he's 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 a couple of years behind me. He he was at Hofstra too. So really, it's a great program, and uh, he's, he's he comes from good stock. He's 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 yeah. he's, 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 he's a he's a haver. He's a haver. So check out his book also if you if you can. He's he's wonder. He's a wonderful clinician also. I, I've referred to him, and um, yeah. So speaking about Hofstra is, is that's that's why I started learning about this. Graduate school in psychology. You got mindfulness. It was it was like a, a side topic. Now it's it's a buzzword, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna put you guys on. What is mindfulness? What does it mean? What does it mean? Yeah, I don't the, know. The it te- just, technical I don't know. definition. You've heard the you've I, heard the terms. I I downloaded this app called Calm. Yeah, I'm, free, I'm sure you've heard of it. I I've actually it. pay for it. Yeah, it's not an ad, <laughs> but I actually pay for you it. You should be. Yeah, no. It's so make, <laughs> not, yeah, uh, everyone download. I'm Calm wearing a thank you they, Hashem hat. Like, <laughs> I'm not yet being paid to wear it. Can I take it off now? <laughs> Hello. Um, I want, no, but I want the Chas de Hashem edition. <laughs> we'll get, we'll get, oh, and it's off. But no, I, so mindfulness to me is, you know, you, you basically, you focus on singular things in front of you and you breathe slowly and you just like slow everything down. Now, is, is that, is that mindfulness? I'll give you, I'll give you like the, the easiest, you know, layman's term who's from, uh, you know, one of my heroes, H E R E slash O. We're going to, Okay. Trademark down. Hero, you know, being really present. His name is John Kabat Zinn. And he wrote a fantastic books on 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 mindfulness. And his definition is paying attention in the present moment non judgmentally, as if your life depended on it, because it does. Meaning all we have is this moment right now. It's just paying attention, which is deceptively simple. We're just, you know, when when we're in this conversation and you're thinking about lunch, you're not being mindful, <laughs> right? If you have to use the bathroom in the middle of a conversation, you're not being mindful. What if I'm thinking like, okay, what's what's in like three questions from now? What my third? That's, that's also the, not being mindful. But I think a, a big key of mindfulness is is the non non judgment part, right? The hardest part to not judge. Can you do it? I, I could you explain can, can what you, you us, mean? Can you give well, us a scenario? You can't do it. Your mind is constantly judging. I like that shirt. I don't like those pants. I don't notice that chair but i noticed that chair as i'm talking to you i'm like he has blue glasses i like my my head's going there i just it's i was about to cover the mic but like it doesn't matter if i, come. I was like it's like you know a little like sidebar there were my wife's frames i am actually gunning for a warby parker's model ship also they're very nice. they're very no nice she, she wasn't wearing them i was like i really like those she's like you like women's glasses <laughs> <laughs> it came out like right like how long did that take and i just I was, so i just changed the lenses i come in every every year for camp so i get like one pair of glasses so i got uh this is the like the new style but old new old but new wait back to what we are actually talking about so our mind what nah. judges every every few the mission in Perkeava says don't judge someone until you walk you know a mile in their shoes it doesn't say don't judge you're gonna judge your mind is constantly judging you either like something you don't like something or you're part of about it so just notice it just notice oh there's judgment I'm judging we're constantly making stories up we tell stories because we can't process everything that's going on and this is a, a nice tie into the, the times we're living in. It's times like these, right? We're like, we're living in a lot of uncertainty. Like I spoke to the staff last night and I said, in times past, sometimes these topics that we talk about, 
I work in, in Hask as the director of staff development and clinical research, which is a title I named myself because there was already a psychologist there. Mm-hmm. I should have been the director of good juju and spreading fairy dust, but it's okay. Maybe next, next summer. Mm-hmm. And I said, I can say with real confidence that everyone in this room is going through something right now. We're always going through something. When you're an 18, 19 year old, you might be ignorant and blissful, but everyone got, I was, I was talking to this poor Sean Olive girl who I was like, yeah, you guys really got shafted. You know, you missed out. She's like, I know. And I just started telling her all the things she's missing. And she's like, mom, she's like, you're not helping. You missed Yom Atzimut. You missed Yom Yishalayim. You missed Lagba Omer. You missed Shavuos. The weather in Eretz Israel now. And she's just like, you're not helping me at all. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. It's like, yeah, you missed out. It's hurt. In the scheme of things, people lost a lot of things. People, how, how certain do we feel? You can't get on a plane. When's the next? I said goodbye to my brother. Zuh. Both of them. I said, bye to my brothers today. When am I going to see you again? I don't know. Again, is, is, it, is it World War II? No. But is it, is it something, an, a, a, a wrinkle that we're like not ready or equipped to deal with? A lot of people are just like, whoa. You thought you were in charge? You thought you were standing on terra firma? Mm-mm. We're, 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 we're always living in uncertainty. So we're going to be making these speculative judgments all the time. We're always predicting. You're like, what's he going to say next? Where's he going? Oh, he, I, he wasn't supposed to say that. How did he get there? Literally, as you're talking, I, 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 am, I think I'm doing that. Yeah. I mean, how, is there, are you supposed to shut that off? Are you supposed to... can't shut it off. If, you ha- if there was a switch, we'd all do it. Is that the right thing? Like, is that, is that ideal to not, to not have judgments about things as they happen? You tell me. Meaning, what, what's, what's a happy person? You know, like oh, I was expecting this. One of the better lines in my book, I really like my book, <laughs> is we're always expecting when we could be accepting. It's like, oh, where's the, where's the disappointment coming from? You know, it's never going to be what we think it's going to be, right? So if you can go there without this judgment, and again, and there's, there, there are different kavanas that I talk about in the book, and, and there's like an idea of cultivating a beginner's mind, of seeing things fresh for the first time. I'm just meeting you guys. Right, you guys hang out all the time. Imagine every single time you see it, it's like, oh, there's more. There's a deepening of it. It's not like a chiddush when you're 18 years old, like I need to go to this tish, I need to go to this tish, I need to go to this matzah. No, it's like I'm going to sing the same niggin over and over again, but every time it's mamish new. You start to see things like a kid. A kid seeing snow for the first time. All we see is like, you know, shoveling and slush (laughs) and like, you know. Baseball field, you walk through those. Yeah. You know, and you see those tracks and you're like, ah, oh, right, just starting. And we can get there, but our brains are not working with us. That's the irony is our brains work really well for a lot of things. We're the dominant species on the planet. But you're, if you listen, if you just like stopped for like five minutes, take your brain out of your head and put it down next to you. You're watching the football game, right? Is football happening this season? I don't even know. Who There's knows? the NBA. Is the, 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 NBA the, the NBA bubble. playing in a bubble. The NBA bubble. So the, so the I NHL, was just in the yeah. Camp Hass bubble. This is the NBA bubble. There's the Camp <laughs> Hass bubble. Everyone was watching. There were like 500,000 people who watched the live stream on Sunday. Really? No, that's what Judah keeps saying. <laughs> 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 He's like, why not? Yeah. Who knows? We're creating our realities. But you take your brain, put it next to you. Pay attention. What's it saying? Change the channel. This is boring. When's this? What, what's, what's, what's for lunch? How yeah. long? How much long? Oh, remember it? I would not want to be friends with that person. He doesn't shut his mouth or she doesn't shut her mouth, right? What am I going to do with that? And the avoda is to take the step back. and Like, I could just watch this thing go. Watch it, watch it, watch it. No, money. look, watch it. You watching that? The train? It's gone. Mm-hmm. Don't get on the train. Stay there. Stay back. But when we get on the train, like, how did I get here? Driving, like, how did I even get here? I don't even know how I got here. Literally, I was like, I was just in half. I can imagine it does what it could possibly do for people's relationships to be mindful is probably incredible. You're either present or you're not. And you can go 20 years without even knowing. You can go. You wake mean, up and you have five kids. Speak, like, wait a minute. Speak to the Rabbanim. Speak to the Rabbanim. Speak to the therapist in the community. Like, he doesn't listen to me. She doesn't listen to me. Like, of course I listen to you. You just said, take out the garbage. Like, you don't hear me, right? It's, 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 and you guys who are doing such a beautiful job, such a beautiful Thank job. I, told, I think I said, see, I don't know who I said this to. Which I said, if I was going to do a podcast and I'm not going to, unless Rodrigo wants to do one with me, if, or Ramosha Weinberger, who's not going to listen to this so I could say that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Can we delete that? Now he's going to listen. No. no. <laughs> I, two of the three people who I heavily lifted from 
this book from were already on this show. Rav Judah and Rav, and, and Rav Weinberger Shlita. The other one is Rav Avinsvi Kluger, who doesn't speak English. So, you know. Ani uh, Yochel. No, 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 no. He, he's not coming on. It's not because of you. Oh, okay, Challenge okay. accepted. It's, it's, not, not, it's not the lack of our Hebrew skills. No, it's not, it has nothing to do with you guys. It has nothing to do with you guys. How did we get onto this? I have no idea. You were saying how the but, people who inspired the book. No, before that. And, before that. On, and right before that, you were, you were saying that I'm on the spot. Hold on, listening. You guys are doing such a beautiful job. Right. Saying, imagine if what it means to be a mindful listener, right? Instead of thinking about the next question, it's hard. It's the hard. It's a skill. It's you, anybody do exercise? Anybody work out? Yeah. You, you look in the gym. You're like, oh, that's hard. Like, right. That's why it's meaningful. Hmm. I know, but we're tr- ah, there. You go. <laughs> TM these guys. These guys. <laughs> I, well, I've I've trademarked the 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 the, the initials B E. So I was like, what, what does that even mean? I'm like, you know, the word beer, like the first two letters are mine. Like, be here now, that's mine. He's mm. like, that's not how it works. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> LeBron tried to trademark Taco Tuesday. Yeah. I'm trying to get the goal is soul. <laughs> okay. The goal. I saw a sign in, in like a Hask post. There's just a lot of bits going on. There's a lot but of bits. It, I mean, for, for us, it's like, I feel like sometimes, not that we need to perform, but we're trying to put out a good product. So it's not always just like listen and respond, listen and respond, that sometimes there's... No, you definitely want to have, you want to keep the conversation flowing. You want to get to your touch points. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to make sure to say like the goal is soul at some point. Like that's like in my mental (laughs) notes. So you were also... Right, there's there's agendas. Is that okay? Again, okay, not okay, meaning it is. is. Start paying attention to it. Start noticing when you have an agenda, when you have... Now again, when there's an agenda in the conversation, you can't be listening mindfully. You just can't do it because you're already listening to what you want to be hearing instead of being open. Your kids. Nachi and me and Michelle in the okay. right time. Okay, in the right time. Bishat Tova. They're going to come to you and sometimes you're going to want to fix it. You're going to have, I was just sitting in the car with her Judah. You know what? We'll skip that story. <laughs> There'll be more. <laughs> no, we did. We just spent. We we said it. We just had it. it. We said it. No, it's it's, it's private. Is it, there's a day trip together? We said it. we spent a lot of time in the car. I bless you guys to be able to after you know working together for for many many years to be able to still want to go on on, on road trips together. You, you said it before before this interview that you're you're of Judas hype man. Oh yeah. What do you mean by that? Oh, he's the best. He's the chief rabbi of the world. I could say that online, right? Judah Michelle. Yeah. Judah Michelle. How do you pronounce his name? <laughs> it's Michelle, Judah. Michelle. It's Judah. It's Judah. No, he's 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 somebody who is a worked on individual who I've had this chus to get to be. I think it's Noam Elimelech. He talks about how you meet somebody for the first time. Am I talking too fast? No, I don't think so. See, that's my brain says you're talking too fast. Really? Right? And you wrote the book. <laughs> oh, he reminds me all the time. Anytime I'm not being mindful, again, you write about things that you aspire to. I want to be my father. I write about it in the book. Like, that's not my character. I'm bouncing off the walls. ADHD wasn't a thing when I was in school. It's not, it wasn't, all the cool kids didn't have it. So, you know, but posh it, mm. posh it. And again, it's a gift, but it has to be harnessed like all of our gifts. So I'm a hype man for of Judah because the Noam El Melch says that if you f- meet somebody for the first time, you feel like, I know this guy. I go way back with this guy. Like, I've never met this guy. He says it means that you were neighbors in Gan Eden. He says it somewhere. Parshas really? Vayichi, I think. He's he's been he's been my soul brother. He really is, and he's a teacher par excellence. He's a teacher of Torah. You ready? You want to start gushing? Let's go. I, he's, no, he's in his element. He lets me do my thing. He's a master orator. A master. You had him on. He had him. He loves the Jewish people. He has strong opinions about Eretz Yisrael and about Jewish pride. And we're in the business of making good people. Like somebody, we had we had a pillar Shabbaton, you know, where people paid money, you know, as to become pillars of Camp Hask. Shout out to pillars of Camp Hask people, and who pays money to a place where you worked? You know, again, it's 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 like oh, you worked and you worked hard. You work hard in Camp Hask, and it's cool, and it's you talk about meaningful. I can give you. I can. There are a lot of beautiful programs, you know, Gam Simcha, you know, coming to mind because I think you've worked there for many years, mm. and. It's just monk is a good place too. <laughs> you know I'm, everything about us. <laughs> we, I'm, a, I'm a therapist. I'm a psychologist. Like, he does go under He does. No, you don't. No, do you, do you Google your client? Like, does he Google me? <laughs> <laughs> I have to like culture. You know, the, the, yeah. the, what's what's your brand? And uh, no, Rav Judah is someone who is is a person who who really inspires. You're, you're saying Camp Has Camp, and then you said Camp Simple. Camp said, Simple, all those places. No, I was saying that Vishkach. Yeah, you're my man. Uh, he's on to me. I'm I'm your hype man. I can give you a guarantee. I can. 
You come into Camp Ask, you leave a changed person seven weeks later, and it's for the better. You're a better person. Like, it's a nice thing. What is it? You're just better. It's not, here's the pitch. I'm not trying to sell it. Here's the, here's, and I think about it, and we talk about it. You know, I was sitting in his backyard before he came in. He, he went, he went back. He, he was back and forth. So he was, right. he, so I came back and I was just sitting with him. He was talking about what's going on. His summer was so good. And we, he prepared a beverage. It was good. We're sitting in his backyard in Beit Shemesh. And he turns to me and he goes, Benji, he says, if you can't stop a few times during the day and say, if this isn't good, I don't know what is, you're not doing it right. And I was like, oh, zang. Mm. And you guys, if this isn't good, I don't know what is. And I've, I've, I, I totally lifted it from him. I told him. And you know, like the, I'm not friends with people who don't inspire me. Mm. I, I don't have time. You have time? I mean, you, you know, you're starting to realize, like, I, I want to be around people who, wanna, who make me better. You know, make me who make me want to strive for more, right? That's that's what, otherwise like what are we doing? We're just we're still in high school, and I love my high school boys. They're not going to be listening. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, but I'm saying if you're not making better, but in Camp Hask, it's not Chesed. I was like, oh, it's a great Chesed. Nine, what's Camp Hask? Mesiris Nefesh. I can't cover the mic. You keep on trying to cover no. the wait, mic. Wait, if, if, if I have to get bleeped, it'll get it'll get amended. I guess so. Yeah. It was up to our I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make a. a it's not exciting to do th- most of the things in Camp Ask. That's not the word I wanted to use. I, but I got you. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. All right. Yeah, but it wasn't. It's not. It's not like the the, the, the clips you see in the, you know, don't say it. It's the <laughs> clips you see in the movie. That's that's point two percent. Two percent of it. You're in the trenches. You're mamish in the trenches. You're in the bunks late at night. You're w- waking up at ungodly hours the next bit i want to be doing in camp ask is having a steps board of like how many steps you took in the day with your camper who's just doesn't stop i was i was i was reminiscing with one of the previous counselors that came up last week i was like you know that we set up a meeting to talk when you know i saw you and he's like what he's like can we meet because what's i do i just talk to the staff all day all day we're just schmoozing it could be about mental health it could be about girls it could be about sports it could be about your shemaim Whatever it is, we're just schmoozing. He's like, I got to talk to you. I was like, well, when you're free, he's like, never. Hmm. I said, okay. So I woke up early Shabbos morning because that was the only time he had. Ask that guy if he had a great summer. Mysterious nefesh means it's not, it doesn't, it's not pretty. It's mamish. I'm giving all of myself. But when my head hits the pillow at the end of the day, I feel like a million bucks because I just tapped into soul. I just tapped into essence. And when you're 18, 19 years old, you've never done that before. Because the greatest thing you've ever done is like, you know, maybe you made your own bed. <laughs> and then parents come and see their ca- counselors. There's their children who are counselors. And they're just like, Bichiot, mamish. Like, they're like, Abba, mommy, I, I can't, I can't, you know, spend too much time with you right now because, you know, we got to get to therapy. You know, we got to get, we got to get to the pool. My, and, like, and, and they cultivate a real relationship because when you give, you love, right? Rav Dessler 101. Is that like um, one of your, I guess, main positions in camp is to, I guess, be there for the counselors who are maybe like emotionally burnt out at times? A hundred percent. Meaning I started off working with the campers and I just keep saying over and over and over again, like these counselors are falling apart. It's and grueling. It's, it's gru- it is, it is beautiful and magical and emotionally extremely challenging because you are parenting, and you did not take all the parenting seminars that you know they're they're going that are going around. You to mention your the counselors are doing things that some of these parents don't even even do during the year because they'll say there's a nurse or there's an aide or someone. They are in it, they are in it, and they are all in. And you have a forty eight hour period of just absolute. Oh my God, what did I get myself into? And the truth is, the first years are in shell shock. It's the second years who I'm really mitapel with, you know, really working with because they're, they didn't come because of social pressure. They didn't come because of their yeshiva pressure. Then they didn't come because of anything other than the fact that they got bit by the bug. So I'm, you walk, you watch them walking around the first day, like, did I voluntarily choose to come back to work here? <laughs> you slick this look on your face. I'm like, you did this to yourself. They're like, again, you're not helpful. I'm like, don't worry about it. I'll give you a hug anyway. Well, I'll give you a hug anyway. What were you saying, Rev Dessler 101? What is Rev Dessler? Well, Rev Dessler says that the root of, of Ahava is Hevet, is to give, mm. right? Where you invest your love, you invest your life. I didn't write that. Sounds good. I should just do it anyway, right? No one's going to know. <laughs>
TM. Yeah, yeah for the millennials. The goal, goal is soul. We don't know. Can you guys help me with swag? I want to make t-shirts. We got you. The goal is the goal, the goal is soul. soul. The yeah, goal is like soul. That. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Wow. Look, thank you, Hashem. Is great. At, where am I looking? Thank you, Hashem. Everywhere. Is great at swag. <laughs> Oh, they're great. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like the cameras everything. Yeah, there's always you're always watching. Things Something I, I want to bring up that I didn't know I had a conversation with you, but I didn't know in be, even from talking to you for a while and then between now, as I was doing research, I, I, I saw something. And if you don't want to talk about this, that's okay. Bring it up. Um, you have a, a child that's special needs. I have a son with special needs. Which, which I wanna I, first of all, just I, I feel like it would have come up, but but for you it was just like that wasn't even the conversation at all. It was it was very impressive to me. I'm really good at talking about things that I want to talk about, and we really good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If someone's like, "Oh, you're nervous," I'm like, "I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited, but like, if I don't want to talk about it, I'll be like, what makes you ask that question?'" <laughs> you throw it right back. Oh. So, first of all, my first question now is, "Do you would you want to discuss?" So, I, in the in the meaning in the car on the way here, I, I was I was mit labet. I was like, do, "Is it is it relevant?" But you brought it up, so why not? I have a son who is 15. His name is Raziel and Kishmo Kenhu. He is a sod. He's beautiful. He's a beautiful child. And if he's not your your son, you're laughing. You are watching him and you are just having the best time. And if you're a parent, you know, so, you know, tying it back, we'll always tie things back together. It's like in in, in Hofstra, I took a course on, on, you know, mindfulness and acceptance and commitment therapy. It was more of an elective. It wasn't mainstream yet. It's really becoming a lot more. And when you guys are looking for therapists after, you know, you know, working together and trying to figure it out, you want, I don't tell you what you want. Like this is, this is the future. This is, it's the present of, of therapy also, but like, don't be heebie jeebie like, oh, mindfulness, my meditation. That's not my thing. No, mindfulness is just being present. It doesn't have to be, it's like when we're talking, I'm mindful. You're being mindful. So it, it just hit me over the head like a ton of bricks. Like, whoa, I need this in my life. Like this is this is what I need, and at the same time, I just had we just had Raziel, we just had our first, and he was our first kid, and it was whoa because we don't know. And my wife knew from day one. He doesn't have a diagnosis. He's you know cognitively delayed or something like that. You see, I'll show you pictures afterwards. He's a beautiful looking child, completely typically looking, and he's out. He's just he's not he's not typically developing, and that may have played into working at Hass, but. If not, you know, again, I told you I'm a Rajuda guy. Hey, did it, I, I say it didn't, it doesn't sound like that's why you're at no, house. No, it doesn't. Like, it, not, but it's funny. Like it's funny. You I remember I, I, I was working with someone and he came into the office and he was just looking at me differently. He was just looking at me differently. I'm like, what's up? And he's just like, I heard something. And I was like, similar. You know, he's like, mm-hmm. he's like, I heard that you have a someone with special needs. And I was like, okay. <laughs> he's like, what no, makes you ask that? No, no, no. No, because he's like, like when you talk about acceptance to me, when you talk about like letting go, you know, all these ideas that we talk about in terms of, of mindfulness, in terms of being present, in terms of like what we want, because that's, that's what therapy is to me, acceptance and letting go. Because if you're able to do that, you know, acceptance of what is and letting go of what isn't, because most of our suffering, if not all of our suffering is coming because we're not accepting what is and we're holding really tightly to something that we have to let go of, Right. And he's just like, oh, because when you talk about acceptance, you know, and it's coming from you, it's like, okay, shkoyach. you know, like easier said than done. He's like, but like, you, you're you're doing this. I'm like, you're only as good as how much you're doing the practice. If you're a therapist, I don't tell people to journal. I, I suggest it, but I'm not I'm not emphatic about it because I'm not doing it. But you got to jog. You got to be doing some physical activity. If you have anxiety, if, if you're again, if your person's like in, you know, a clinical depression, it's hard to. But if you got, you know, you're feeling a little funky and you're not in the mood to jog, you jog. You'll feel better. What does that do? In terms of the like the biochemistry of it, I guess. Yeah, the endorphins. I'm saying, have you jogged? I've I don't jogged, do any yeah. physical exercise. I've My jogged. wife bugs me all the time to do it. I just try it. Try it. I'm but saying, what does it do? Like I've 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 definitely I've jogged. Chemicals. Yeah. And and what what releases, releases them? Energy, releases them. Like yeah, releases yeah, the serotonin, the serotonin, and so the dopamine. If someone has anxiety and they jog, what effect does it have on their anxiety? It will well, it'll lower it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Meaning like Two plus I, two keep, I keep looking with the camera like I want to say things because like, I want to. But uh, if, no, if you're a psychiatrist and your client could be put on a physical fitness regimen and you're not doing that before you prescribe them some medication, dude, yeah. or do that. <laughs> no, it's like, come on. No, again, it's a business and people need to make a parnasa. But let's be honest here. If you're doing, I'm not getting into trouble. I'm not looking at the studies, but I'm saying try it. 
Try the jogging. The behavioral activation. The You're saying for people like don't don't necessarily medicate right away. If if it's if you need it, it's a mitzvah. And if you don't, ideally, you don't want to be taking anything. You don't want to be taking Advil Stom. Right. It's like oh, they're they're yummy. They taste good. <laughs> I um, actually I got off of that. I used to take Advil. Every headache I got, I just pop Advil. Okay. And it's just like it was so bad. For, it's so bad for me. It's not good for you. That's it. But again, anything that's not natural. You know, this is anything. a free therapist session for Nachi, by the way. That's why we brought you, you in. <laughs> just so, just so like <laughs> Nachi can tell you about his it, Advil addiction. You, this is this is an orchoser. It's, it's we're, we're, yeah. just, we're just when when, when Jews I'm sit messing, together, I'm when messing. Jews sit together, good things come out of it. Right. When Jews sit together and, and they're and they're they're doing things in the service, and service is a word we use a lot in Camp Ask, in the service of the Jewish people, good things come out of it. We'll get back to this episode in just a second, but first, a quick little story for you. My friend went to Israel last year with his family. He's in the car on the way to the airport and he turns to his wife and says, oh no, we forgot the asthma medicine for Yankee. And his wife looks at him and says, we're with the best pharmacy in the world. Do you understand AMR filled it for us? Uh, I already told them we were going to Israel and they made sure they delivered it. They made sure that we had it because they knew we were going. Wow. Sad. And my friend was able to then focus on his trip. Wow. And not worry about that medication because he is with the best pharmacy in the world. Sadly, in Israel, Yankee ran out of... No, 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 I'm, no, kidding, no. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Know, time, it was fine. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Can no. you even joke about that? Yeah, no, uh, well... About made up people, I think I could. What? I said about made up people, I think I could. <laughs> Guys, that's just an extent. That's an example of who AMR is. One second, if, you didn't, if you didn't like that joke, email yakovlanger at gmail.com. <laughs> um, it, uh, two ways. <laughs> Basically, AMR Pharmacy, they're the place to go, guys. I imagine someone's it's the first episode they ever listened to. They're like, wow. These this, guys are terrible. This is knee deep in AMR. But guys, it's, it's the best pharmacy in the world. The best. Reach the best. out to them. AMRPharmRx.com. That's A-M-R-P-H-A-R-M-R-X.com. Or you can give a phone call to 848-222-1110. That's 848-222-1110. Now off to Yakov Langer. So... I, I I signed up. I did this. Okay, I spoke about this last week. What are you signing up for? Dailygiving.org. dot org. I I prom- we promoted it two weeks ago. I didn't sign up myself. I'm like, yeah, everyone use it. It's great. And then I actually signed up. I love it. Every day I get an email that says, hey, today your dollar was donated and I already paid for it. I, I did the yearly subscription. You could do for a month. Really, you got to just try it out. I just did it, and you know. Your dollar's going to to the uh, Atzala in in Israel for Eli Bear's organization. Amazing, and I didn't. I really signed up. I, I to be honest, I kind of forgot about it. And every day, I just get another email. Every day, you're reminded about the people you're helping yeah. with that email. And, and imagine if ten percent of the people were listening to this, they would and sign up. It'd be thousands of dollars, literally thousands. I think he said millions. Th- Thousands, I don't know. Almost millions. They 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 raised over one point eight million dollars. And that think about it, it's so crazy. It's like it's just a dollar. Like how many people am I actually helping? Just a dollar a day, but it really, really adds up. So guys, if you're listening to this, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Go to dailygiving.org and sign up one dollar a day. One dollar a day going to a different organization. It's a Dakayomi. It's a great thing to be involved in. And now enjoy. Wait, rest. hold on. I want to say more. Of <laughs> and and, and I know it's I, I know it for myself because I literally did the ad and I didn't sign up myself. But please, guys, if you really could, just take a look on their website. Just try it out for a month. And I think 98%, he said, 98% of people just stay on because it's it's a no-brainer. It's so easy and you really help so many people in college. So it's also a great gift idea, which we'll get into another time. But AMR Pharmacy, use them, dailygiving.org, check them out, and enjoy the rest of the episode. Do you think everyone should go to therapy? I think everyone can potentially benefit from therapy, but it's a shidduch. Do you think everybody should date? You're like, yeah, should marry the first girl you date? No, it's like... So is that the right one? You got to find the right one. And is again... There, is, there, is there a certain type that wouldn't benefit from therapy? Like that it would like... Who wouldn't... Let's say be- someone's super, you know, tight and like... Well, that's a perfect candidate for I therapy. I know. I guess it's like, going to come down to the shidduch. It's expensive. It's a, it's a, it's, it, it takes up time. It's humbling because you're admitting that you're not stuck perfect. somewhere. Yeah, you're not perfect. And we're not perfect. Mm. I want another bit I want to be doing next summer. I'm thinking, like, I'm still like in half. Write these down. I came straight from asking. <laughs> I just want to give out permission slips, permission to be a human being, I permission, like that. permission to have a bad day for like seven days, for one day, for a whole year. 
just, just, just be kind to yourself, especially during this time of Corona. That's been my route because I'm working on that. You know, just be, just be a little bit more gentle. You would never talk to yourself. Excuse me. You would never talk to a friend. Whoop, whoop. You would never. <laughs> you're good. I'm good. You, it's, it's playing with you. You're trying to be mindful, but this thing's like, no, nope. <laughs> no, this is not mindful. This is like, no, no. You're meditating and that goes off. You notice it. You bring it back. That's yeah. all. Okay. Back to the conversation. Mm-hmm. That's it. You have two choices. You commit to something. You slip up. What are your two choices? You either recommit or you quit. We're not quitting. We're just get back on the horse. Oh, I did this. I'm having this urethra. I messed up. Is it? That was then. This is now. I, Benji, Dr. Benji, what about like beating myself up for like doing what I did? I'm like, why is that part of that? When did that become part of the equation? Well, if I don't beat myself up, then will I ever really learn? I'm like, is that how you treat like a train a dolphin to jump through a hoop? You, the garbage out of it. <laughs> you stupid dolphin. <laughs> You're the worst dolphin ever. You would not talk to a good friend the way you speak to yourself. Just just start catching yourself. The way we speak to ourselves. Like, why? My wife, Das Das Torah, right there. My wife. <laughs> she has she has it. Yes, that's it. She she doesn't like this story, so she's not gonna listen. Yeah, she's gonna hey, hey Eliora. <laughs> <laughs> you know the diaper. You can't remember. It's two summers. She put it, she put it in a little ball. Did a little juke and little things. She looks at me. She goes, I never miss. She's not going to like this story. <laughs> like, I think I know she, this is going. She's like, I never miss. How long have you guys been married? Uh, Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. The answer is, I don't say boo. She's not making it. There's no chance. <laughs> I don't say boo. She looks around, does a little look deep, little fake and day, shake and bake, whatever it is. I'm a lefty, so you know I'm going to James Harden it. And it's like, Pah. she was like a football field away. <laughs> Don't say a word. She looks at me. She goes, I never miss. I'm like, I love you. I love you. Because you know what? Why? Because your brain's constantly saying you're going to miss. I don't know. Maybe I will. Miss. Why not? Why not be confident? You're like, well, she's delusional. No, she's confident about things. Like, you know, why wouldn't you? Why, things are going to be okay. Uh, in the next shot, I'm going mi- to I'm gonna make it. Why not? Oh, you can be right now at this moment. Did she I, miss? Yeah, she, yeah, she said she was a football thing Football away. field oh. away. She was a football field. It wasn't even, cl- it wasn't like she, she didn't rim out. And she, mom, she's like, she's like, I never miss. I'll shrug like, it off. Shrug it off. Because mm-hmm. right now, the next shot, right now, you could always be doing the right thing. Again, Rahman al you'd commit a terrible murder or something like that. I'm not talking about that. We could talk. But like right now at this moment, for, 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 again, we're not going to talk about acceptance of difficult emotions what about abuse and if you're an ex- again we're not we're not we're not talking about trauma again we're talking in like generalizations mm-hmm. this is not a therapy session for nachi right now <laughs> or yeah, he'll, he'll get it <laughs> he got it no he got he got his no he's like not he's like ganging up i mean no he, did, he uh, had his, okay. he, he had his, for me also nah, he had his yesterday he had yeah his yeah yesterday. i slept him for a long time it's just great. saying that like you know the way we speak to ourselves we create a reality we really create a reality and we can really change that we can't stop it right we can't stop the train but we don't have to get on. Your brain has a hardwired negativity bias. What was the best part of your day? Oh, I don't know. Tell me some things that went w- wrong today. Here's the list, right? You have to work a little harder. And guess what? We don't like to work so hard. And our brains would rather just go like, oh, the first thing that comes to mind, right? they're like, oh my God, I got wet on the way here. You know, I sat in traffic. Like I got to be on the Meaningful People podcast. Hmm. I'm a meaningful people. You are. You know what's very ironic? I think in the past, and I'm opening up well. In the past week or two, that's what we do. I know. I love. I, I safe I, space. This is I space. love. How open up. are we, Rav Judah? Yo, this is this is great. <laughs> I love you. So, um, for the past week or two in my life, I don't think I've ever been. And Baruch Hashem, everything's great. But I don't think I've ever been so. I've been just so stressed and and just. I don't know if anxious is the right word, but like just about life, about like Parnassa, about the future of this podcast in Mitch right. and 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 um, where I'm going to live. I want to start a community. Yeah. Is that going to happen? We're in like, a group. Like which community? Like it? there's and do I need to make more. I'm making money. I need to make more money. And 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 just so much going on. And I find it ironic that Hashem's like. Okay, you're gonna have the way we even got you is very last second. Very last second. No, so, this, this, this was this was a game time decision. I'm, fl- even, I'm flying out to Eretz Israel tonight, it, and we thank you for coming in. I was, again, how could I? I don't. Two of the three people who I heavily lifted this book from <laughs> were on this podcast. Like it's a no brainer. You guys are, are are really setting a very high bar, and and making a difference in people's lives. And we appreciate That's, that. And that was the intention thank we you. set before we started out here. What would, what would you tell a client? Yeah, I don't even know. Said, I'm not even asking a question. Okay, I don't even know. Okay, like, would you want a therapist who is such a ball guy to be like? 
Yeah, this is this is you. This is who you are. I'm going to tie you up into them. Chas v'shalom. No, size them up. Let's go. No. <laughs> Again, when we size people up, we stop trying to learn who they are. What, what right. could you say that could help me now? Just, just again, part of part of that stress and the anxiety is is focusing on the things that you have some control over, mm-hmm. and recognizing what you don't, and seeing where you get stuck. Right? Where do you get hooked? Where do you get? And I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a practical this this new community. I want to build a new community, and I think that houses here are just so expensive, and and I don't even know what I could do, but I just know that like time's ticking and people that I know are buying houses. I'm like, I really just want to just start something new that too far away. I don't, and I just bug out about it. And I'm like, I go to sleep. I'm like, well, we didn't get a step closer to the community. And I'm like, yeah, but what am I supposed to do? I just talk to people. Again, I'm not a building, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm in, the, I'm in the realm of, you know, or in the book, like, you know, there's a, there's the Chachma and the Bina, right? The Chachma right. is the, is the, you send me the picture, right? Yeah. The, the, the Chachma is that, you know, that, initial you know burst and then the, the lightning bina is the, you might not be a bina guy i'm mm-hmm. not a bina guy I, i'm not a person who's a, the, i'm not a detail oriented person I'm, I'm like whoa let's go big picture let's go big practical therapist no i was like you got to figure it out for yourself but it's like, you want to make it happen how'd you get this to make how'd you make this happen i don't know it, it took months to <laughs> it took do a long time it takes it takes time it, it takes, takes time, time. It takes time. You're, we're planting seeds we're cultivating it you're not a building developer do you have an area where you want to be doing it yeah Okay, you have an idea. You speak to the right people. Who built up that community? You speak to people. Mm. Like you don't have to do everything. It's that feeling. Again, it's starting to recognize when you're putting this unbelievable amount of pressure and expectation on yourself. Mm. And it's just like, where's that coming from? It's like, wow, I got it. And I have to be the man. I got to get help. Why does it always? Why does it have to just be you? That's a good point. Right, you have to build this community. I mean, you, you built a podcast, and I can build a community. Like, (laughs) it's very different. Different, different skill set. And Baruch Hashem, you're, you're ambitious. And you're doing good things and you're helping people. And so you want to continue that. And you'll have to see how to deshmai with that. But again, if you want to do it all on your own, that's not the way it works. You mentioned before uh, that Rav Judah Michelle told you Shlita. Shlita, <laughs> that if you if you don't if you don't if you don't stop and think this If this is, isn't good, if, if this, this isn't, isn't good, good then, then what is? So I mean like going off what you said, and I echo a lot of things that Yaakov just said. I think that, you know, Baruch Shem, you know, let's say things are good. But that's how do you stop? It? If you if you're not stopping and saying oh, if this isn't good, what's no. what? Meaning we we're, we're human beings, we're not human doings. We get stuck in this doing mode, and that's where we that's where we that's coming from. Like this part, you know, it's like you know we got it. We just got to make it happen, make it happen, make it happen, make it happen. And we're very results oriented. God's not so results oriented. God's already decided the outcome again based on my limited understanding of how things work. Rav Judah walked around the whole camp like I didn't eat the bat. Like it's not, and the, because there's things he that said why I don't need. He said I didn't eat the bat. I didn't eat the bat. <laughs> like, 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 like why can't we do this? He's like I didn't eat the bat. Like what are you coming to me for? Like that, you know, Lech Le'uman Shasani. Right? There's a Gemara that talks about how Rav Shimon Ben Elazar is, is walking and he sees this person who looked mechuar. He was he was an ugly person. Whatever that meant to the Tana Eloki. He's like Look, this ugly person. And he's like, how, why are you so ugly? Imagine a Tana saying that. And the man responded, go to Uman, who made the, the, the person, go to the Uman. No, don't go to Uman. I mean, you could, you should go to Uman. If you can, if you can get to Uman this year, call like avod, ashrenu. But he's saying, yeah, go to Uman. You know, everything, everything gets fixed by Uman. No, he says, go to the Uman, go to the craftsman who made me and ask him. And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry to pause it. But like, this is the way, this is the way Hashem made these things. She's saying like, why can't you stop? Where's that motor coming from? Do we need to feel success all the time? Do we need positive reinforcement all the time? Because it's what, if I'm sitting idle for two seconds, immediately that voice in my head says, you're not doing enough. You're not, you're not good enough. Shabbos is the day where our Kaddish Baruch Hu says, it's not you. Take a deep breath. What's the mitzvah on Shabbos? You make Kiddush, you make Avdala, in between, there's nothing. Stop doing. But just be. Six days in between are are just. We gotta bring Shabbos. Because it happens when I shut my phone, phone, phones off on Shabbos. It's Not extremely. It's 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 liberating. It's liberating. But that's one out of seven days. I don't t- I don't touch my phone on Monday Shabbos now. I just want to bring a little bit more. I don't touch my phone on Monday Shabbos. It's just a little bit more. Before we release our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna listen to myself. No, I'm. I've saying, heard myself yeah. all the. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if if I could not touch my unless phone I'm singing, shower, so I'd love to. although I do leave long voice notes. You sing, that. you sing also. I, I do sing. I do. I do. Feel, I, you can check out my music. Can you give us a bit. Like, do you want quick? me to start singing right now? There you go. 
Um, no, no, I'm not singing someone else's songs. I'm singing, you know, <laughs> oh, song. he doesn't yeah, original. Song. No, the original. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a Levite, and I believe that one day I'll be singing the Levite choir. Although maybe one day I'll be in the the Rev Judah's dad is going to be the head of uh, of a uh, uh, toy fanboy. Are you a fan of Rev Judah? I never asked that. No, kidding, kidding, kidding. I love. Rev Judah's dad is going to be the head of security because the Levium and the Beis Hamikdash were either in the choir, they were, or they were the showroom. So he's going to be the head of security. Is so I'm not voice? sure. <laughs> I think he just wants to. He think he just wants to, like you know, he just wants to. He just wants a good parking spot. Um, so I did an album called Shiri Alavim, and the names of the songs are Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Shabbos. They all sound the same. Where could we find that? Uh, you know, on Spotify, For iTunes. Real? Oh yeah, I'm legit. Nah, but we dropped the ball on this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. No, yeah, really it's cool. okay. I can't. I can't. I, I can play my three chord songs. The next project, because you guys are gonna help me with this one. Aside from the next two books I'm writing, Swag. which I need help with, swag T-shirts and and uh, funding for the I got. I'm doing hollow. You doing what? Um, a book on Halal? Nope, a CD on on Halal. A music. Ah, that's beautiful. If I hear this song another time, <laughs> we gotta do something about this one. I don't know if I have the time, but anyway. But I, I would, yeah, I got this. Um. So yeah, we don't know how to stop. Right. And and and. Exhibit A. Mm. Holding up a cell phone. I thought I'm on camera. You are, but you, a lot of people listen and don't watch. They just hear it. Oh, I'm holding up my cell phone. We can't go a minute. I mean, the fact that this is even here, according to some research, says it's going to be machit somebody. It's like like your conversation is going to be more strained because there's a presence of a cell phone. Yeah. We all know it. Guess who's stronger? You are the cell phone. We already know. We already know. It's a cell phone. The cell phone. <laughs> and we... we, we I could take this, man. I'm not talking about anything Chas Shalom inappropriate. It's just the amount of time that we spend in the cesspool of Twitter and, and, and Facebook. And again, it's beautiful. And we're spreading Torah. We're spreading ideas. And you didn't need to be in the bathroom that long. Right. <laughs> you didn't need to be in the bathroom that long. But, thing, we can't stop. Yeah. Again, no, but we, we feel anxious. We feel bored. We feel any negative emotion or what we'll call negative, And we will instinctively reach for something that's going to just distract us. You know what's sad? I never, I hate feeling bored. It's a strong word. I hate this, and I'm using this word. I want to use it because I hate being. Oh, wait, are we allowed to? Yeah. Yeah. We could. Oh, oh yeah. sorry. You didn't dear. Eat the bat. I'm sorry, dear. <laughs> I, I didn't eat the bat, but my, I, my wife thinks I ate the bat. <laughs> I come, if I bring the bat home with Navarsh, I'm good. I brought um, a lot of Amazon home. We, Amazon's. <laughs> I should have told people to invest in Amazon stock. She's like, I was like, Rajuda wants me to come in. She's like, Chayavim, you have to go. I'm going to start ordering now. <laughs> <laughs> so I hate being bored. And I'm never, because I hate being bored and I run away from being bored because I always have my phone and it's a little sad, it's not a little, it's sad that I never have boredom. I'm always either on Instagram or WhatsApping and in my head, I'm like, yeah, listen, I'm connecting to people, but I'm not connecting to myself. And I, I'm talking for myself, but I, 99% of people have this How issue. How open are we right now? <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're, we're open. We're all the way. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I appreciate it. No, I, sure. appreci I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Podcasts like nobody's watching. Really? Yeah. That's what we're doing right now. Yeah. It's like, what's, what are you afraid of? What, what, I, I've been conditioned, and your brain is also doing it, meaning you'll get that instantaneous re reward. You, you see a dog, you're afraid of dogs, you cross the street, you feel better. You get that instant, instant fix. Any negative emotion that we avoid, we, this is what we learned last night in Camp Ask. We learned the peace in the Kutamaran. Kuftet vav, umoshen nigash el rafel, kisham alokim. Vayamo da ame rachok, the Pasuk says, that people stand by. But Moshe went into the dark cloud. What's the dark cloud? Whatever dark cloud comes up, we run away. Even if it's bored. bored Benji, why? It's, no, if I can't be bored. If your kids can't be bored. If they can't, like, just sit. How could you be bored? Sit and think. Imagine, like, I need constant stimulation. I need constant stimulation. I need constant, 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 constant. It wasn't always like that, was it? Of course it wasn't like that. Again, we had our things. Everyone, everyone a mullah's like, a mullah's but, but like this. We have a day off from that. Imagine, we, what, I mean, society. And people think it's great. People, people who have it's, seven days nonstop. People think it's wonderful. People I don't know think how it's they wonderful. do it. They, they, they don't, they don't want to stop, you know, because sometimes when you have to stop, you have to be bored. And sometimes when you're bored, other things are going to come up. You're like, am I happy? Like, am I, am I, you know? Messias Hashem starts and says, "Yisod achasidus v'shor shavoda sheisbar v'yis ames etzel adam mau chavaso beolamo." When are you supposed to ask yourself that question? When you die <laughs> on your deathbed, you'll be lucky if you have all of your yeah. faculties and surrounded by your loved ones. You'd be like, "Well, it's my chova in this world." <laughs> no, you got to be able to pause. I think davening is that pause. I think brachos are that pause. 
I'm wearing strings, which should in theory give me a pause. You know, I kiss a mezuzah before you go into a room, before you leave a room. You pause for a second to say, you know, Mark Fot Shemaim, leave this room. You know, we're going through doorways. We're exiting and entering constantly. I'm going to leave here. When am I going to see you guys again? It's like in, out. It's like, okay, right here, right now. So Moshe, who is the Bechina of Das, according to the Svar Magadoshim, and we all have that aspect in us, goes into this dark cloud. Kisham Elohim, because where's my God? Right? The Gemara says, Rabbi Nachman quotes the Yushalmi. He says, someone asks you, where's your God? Where are you supposed to answer him? And the Yushalmi Tana says, Bekrach Gadol Shalom, Bekrach Gadol Shalom, he's in Rome. What's Rome? All right, in this book, Rome is the, Rome is, Rome is, Rome is the bat. Right? Rome destroyed the base of Amigdash. Rome is the twin of Yaakov and is the Mamish, the antithesis of Kedusha. Right? Ace of Sonas Yaakov. Where's God? In that place. Because you know what? A person saying, Where's your God? It's not some guy in the corner being like, Hey, where's your God? Hey, have you seen God yet? It's not Uncle Moshe Hashem. Is here. No. It's you. You're like, where, where are you right now? Are you there, God? It's me. It's me, Benji. Right? And Rabbi Nachman is another Torah where a person has to say, I am a kivodo. It's not like, Where are you? It's like, where are you? I know you're here, right? I know you're here. And even if I can't feel you, if I can't see you, if I, if I know that you're here with me in this moment, gam ki though I walk in the valley of the shadow of the death, <laughs> lo yirara, right? Nah, I'm not afraid. Why not? Ki imadi. So if you can bring, again, this is the chiddush of the book. It's not a chiddush. Rav Weinberger has been saying it for years. Rav Jews has been saying it for years. Another teacher of Shmuel Braun has been saying it, teaching these things. And again, whoever you... Think about your best Rebbe. Where you, Darke, where did you go? I, I went to Shifra Akwe. Shifra Akwe. You have any Rebbe there who you love? All right. How about, <laughs> so get, I have my right Victor. You, no, you, got, Victor, you, you, you ever sit down with him? Uh, n- yeah, I do. When you're talking to him, is he all there? He's all in. Yeah. You feel it. Yeah. You know it. That's that's what it is. Mm. We want to be all in. Right? So again, Krakow del Shoromi, you're in the depths of, of Gehenim. Hashem's there. Aye Mikom Kvodo, right here, right now. This book, Buddhism does mindfulness really well. They've been practicing it and cultivating it for 2,500 years because nobody was chasing them, right? Yeah. <laughs> nobody was chasing them. I called this, I called the Rosh so I came up. I said, do we have a, a loving kindness meditation? He laughed. He's like, we don't have anything. But you read Ari Kaplan, Rabbi Ari Kaplan, that's all. He said, it's all ours. It's all ours. You learn B'nai Mach from the P.S. Ezra and you learn it together with Rav Weinberger Shurim. It's like, you have to meditate to be a person who's able to stop. Otherwise, you can't do it. What does that look like, though? What does the meditation look like? We'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. I'm saying, but the Jewish mindfulness is, I'm not just consecrating the moment because it's all we have. It's what, that's the only moment that I could be Davuk Tashem in. If I want to connect to, I want to be Davuk, I want to be, be connected right now. Like, if I can only be Davuk Tashem during the Kumsitz, if I can only be Davuk Tashem when I'm putting on my tefillin, Oops, right? That's not Davok. That's not Dvekas. That's you with your ego and your wants and your limited understanding of how things are supposed to be working. Oh, that's the way Hashem wants it. Okay. And then you don't get stared. Are you jumping for joy about the negatives? No, but you're not morbidly depressed. We're going for a Shivisi Adonai Lenegdi Summit. Hakol Shaveh, the Baal Shem Tov says. Everything is equal. What do you mean? You want me to just be like, blah? No, you want to be like, chill. I'm not chill, but you know those people. Again, Picture that rabbi. What was his name again? Rabbi Noach Victor. Right? Yeah. He's got it? Yeah. Yeshlo yeah, would say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, when he's with you, he's with you. He's with you. Full and again, I want to be like that guy. I'm not that guy. I'm getting there. Hmm. I wrote a book about it. <laughs> but you know, so what does meditation look like? Again, you make a bracha before you eat. That's a meditation. Right? This is meditation. You're like, Mama, you sit down, you pause. You instead of going like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. No, instead of going, did I make a bracha? I right. don't, you know, I, uh, I never remember. Bro, right. no, like, and again, and when you forget the bracha, the bracha, you eat bracha, just like that, and you remember, great. How, now it's time to make the bracha. Oh, I suck. Oh. What are the stats? Like, 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 you, yeah. like you make the bracha. Uh, Rav Kluger has such a brilliant idea. He's like, what does your Shmon Esri look like on a Rosh Chodesh in, uh, you know, the Tavis will say it's a two day Rosh Chodesh, it's a mincha of the first day. And you forget, if you get Yalvi, what's the halacha? The halacha is, you have to chazer Shmon Esri. You've got to say Shmon Esri again. What does that second Shmon Esri look like? 
You ever done that? I mean, I've never forgotten Yellow Viavo, but I'm saying really, <laughs> I've, I've forgotten twice. Yeah, it, it is so it's it's so much. But isn't faster. that a lack of mindfulness to, be, to forget it? One hundred percent. It's like how do you forget? You're there. And what does this? What does the second? What does the second? Because because by what, the Yankee because game. because, because guy, yeah because no because that, because we're thinking about business. That's what the, that's the joke. Is when do when do people who don't pray have time to think about business? <laughs> If they, if they don't have Chazar shots, I'm saying like all my all my chidushim, all my chidushim come up. It's either there or in the shower. All right, my, all my right. good thoughts. Because again, we're also like you know we're able to just let things go. No, but what's what does that second Shmona Esrei look like typically? I don't know if you've ever been there. Especially if you first of all you're looking around making sure nobody sees you. Right. <laughs> like oh god, you do the shuffle. The, right, I, I mean, it's, it's I'm quick. doing a shuffle now. If you're just listening, <laughs> right? it's quick. It's it's you're trying to just get to Yalav Yavai. Trying to get right back there. You just, and you want to. Ruf Kluger's like. The halacha is you're supposed to repeat Shimon Esther. So daven it kemosh Is it the first time that didn't happen? It didn't. It's over. What happened happened. My da hava hava. The past is gone. Is that the mindset? The past is just knock it out. It's not the mindset. It's the reality. Now again, the past is going to predict the future for sure. But again, it's all subsumed in the right now. Hashem's name is Yud, Hey, Vav, and Hey, which is the Haya, Hova, and Yiyeh, right? It's everything. It's all right now. Yes, the past is going to inform the present. But again, if you're present... Even the past is now, you're saying. It's, again, for God. You know, if we could tap into that. My daughter was walking with me recently. She's a bit of a trip. A lot, a lot. She goes, Abba, is Ghanid in a place? I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I just want to go home. And I was like, I mean, I think there are some people who think it's a physical place, but really it's more, it's more here and here. And then she walks for a few more minutes and she goes... Are we in Gan Eden now? And I said, it's like a, like a scene out of like you know, <laughs> it's a scene out of Field of Dreams. Like, are we in heaven now? I was like, no, I think we're, we're in <laughs> Iowa. And we were we were in Yushalayim, which is close, you know. But like, I was like, uh, maybe we might be. And then like two minutes later, she's like, are we all dead and in Gan Eden? I was like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, well, Gan Eden is a mindset, right? They 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 they, they say like olamcha and Rebbe chayecha. Like a person can be living. A gun, and not not always because we're just we're in the physical goof, but we can have we can have moments where we're just like oh, like this is the way it's supposed to be, and that's Gan Eden. Everything is in the right place. Or like again, no, it's this what you're eating. You're eating from a a, a, a shora bor, and you, you know, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe I don't think about it so much. It's the Torah doesn't talk about Gan Eden. The Torah doesn't talk about Tchias Hamisi. I believe in it a hundred million percent. I believe in Gogul and Neshamas hundred percent. I don't think about it. What was I like in a previous lifetime? I don't know. A Zulu warrior? I don't know. But right now, we're all supposed to be here. Right now, supposed to be. We're here right now. So that means I don't know. Bava Cherebi, wrestle. I don't know. Something. If you are here, it means that God can't do it without you. You either in or out. How much difference does it make? I don't know. What difference? We have no idea what impact we're because we don't know. We don't see. We're seeing our little piece. And we have a Muna. We have a Muna. The Muna is faith in right now that things are the way they're supposed to be. Corona is the way it's supposed to be. Yup. You know why? Because it happened. I did an Avera. It also happened. Now I could do Chuva. Chuva is part of the process. Chuva is just getting back to who you really are. Chuva is by definition the mindfulness mitzvah. It says, Ein va'ata el lashon Chuva. Right now. You could be doing the right thing. Just get back to what you really are about. And we believe that the neshama is what we're real about. The goal is soul. The goal is soul. What's it like uh, living in Yerushalayim? It's nice. It's yeah. nice. It's nice. It's nice. Recommend? It's nice. Yeah, it's Yerushalayim. You know, whenever I'm fetching to my wife, and I'm a fetchy person, <laughs> I try not to be. I'm working on it. I'm working on being less fetchy. She's like, you know you, know you live in Yerushalayim. We live in Baca. We found a school for my son there. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's the Yad Like when I walk to the Kotel mm-hmm. on Shabbos, and no, I haven't done it in a while. Yeah, yeah. I walk there and uh, I, I go to I go to Shul to talk. You know, I go to the hotel to see Rav Yol Rakowski <laughs> and uh, name drop. And uh, what's up? And you think he's listening? No, but someone's gonna tell him. Uh, okay. there you <laughs> you go. guys have wide reach. You guys have reach. You guys have real w- wingspan. And uh, yeah, it's 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 sometimes it's a dream come true. I bless you both to be walking with your uh, you know with your wives. You know, like thirty minutes before the uh, this is the first time I've been home for a summer in, in eight years. So July. It's like mamish, like five, six, six, we'll say six, six, fifteen, like 30 minutes before the siren goes off. Just walking the streets of, 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 of you know, Baca, Katamon. And it's like, are we in Gan Eden? <laughs> that's no, what it's like, yes. Yeah, that's right. Are we in Gan Eden? It's, it's, it's magical. It's magical. 
It's your shalim. You know, you live there. You live there like almost your whole life. Nah, I grew up in Miami. Now, if you look, if you're gonna make aliyah from Miami Beach, you know, you get you get extra schar. Right. No, nothing against Teaneck, but like, <laughs> <laughs> no, people in Teaneck buy books too. <laughs> we love you guys. Um, there's there's a bunch more questions, and and we're thinking of doing another episode with you. Okay. I, and we'll have, we're gonna have, we're gonna have him back. Are we having? Fun? I live in your shalim. So I'm sure. How many times are you here during a regular year? I don't. I'm a, I'm, again, my my my. I'm a, I'm a during. The, it's like ten months of the year. I sit in an office. I talk to you know x amount of people a day. Very quiet. You know, I'm by myself. And then in the summer, you know, I adapt. Like you know this. I mean, my, I told you my job description. You know, I'm sprinkling. I mean, right. and and again, Milatova and myself is that you know I came to camp like, wow, like that. You feel it. You feel it. You're there. You're just like, whoa, Dr. Benji, let's go. Because I love the staff. I never did it. My son's there. Your son's in, in, in camp? Yeah, my son's in camp. Not this, now, he wasn't able to be here right. this year. Otherwise, I would have been here for longer. But he wasn't able to be here because of Han Chayot, Mod Burot. And you couldn't, it couldn't work it out. But, uh, you know, I'm there and I'm, I'm in love with these. I'm in love with the staff. I'm crazy about them. And I walk around all day telling them how awesome they're like, enough. I'm like, nope. No, you need to hear this. You need to hear that this is not move on, may love. They don't feel it's special because, again, it's not chesed. You walk that old lady across the street. Hmm. You f- I'm a good person. Right. You help someone shower or out of their clothing. You don't necessarily feel like so so great. But it's mysterious nefesh. Mysterious nefesh doesn't feel like anything. Mysterious nefesh is, is, is bone, you know, tired. And it's like, oh. and want to hear a good story? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, this is, this is my orientation story. You ready for this one now? First day of camp. First day of camp is, you know, you throw someone into the deep end of the pool and they don't know how to swim. That's what camp is. Oh, right. And you add sharks. <laughs> That's the first day. It's mamash. It's a lot. And you're 18 years old. You're 19 years old. You've never had any responsibility in your life. And now you're dealing with, deal, you're working with someone with complicated disabilities, autism, you know, developmental delays, medical I- issues. It's amazing. I, I, you couldn't believe it. I mean, I, I'm in awe of these of these kids. And I, I don't care why they're there. If they're there because they're yeshiva sent them, because they, they, they're hoping to meet a girl. Mm-hmm. Lama you're there, right? Don't, don't, don't get, you know, you're asking shtick or stark, all right? Don't, you're talking don't, about the staff or the campers? I'm talking about the staff. Talk about the staff. Okay. The camp staff. I'm one of those, these, are, these are my people. Guy comes over to me, he's wearing white shorts. I already don't like him. Judgment. <laughs> white shorts the camp has do you know where you are (laughs) come on you're playing with fire (laughs) i'm in the wrong bunk he tells me it's the first day of camp i have i was like what do you mean he's like he points to his camper his camper sitting under the tree 30 year old individual with with angelman syndrome sweet but he looks very serious but the sweetest person in the world you can't even begin to imagine how sweet this person is he's just sitting there and he's like i'm not going to connect with him i'm not going to connect with him you know it's you know where we're going here He's like, he knows the punchline. He's like, you already, you already skipped to the punchline. <laughs> I, I, I'm with you. Let, My mind go. is, yeah. It's all of our minds. We're just reining it in and we're going to watch it and we're going to be curious and we're going to be gentle and we're going to love ourselves. He's like, I'm in the wrong bunk. I'm, I need I need a labor dick. You know, I want to I I dance. I want to put him on my shoulders. Like, this guy's not going anywhere on any shoulders <laughs> ever. You know? I look at him and I say, look, I give him this, the standard piece and you give him like a little smack on the back and I say, look, First day, it's going to be a little bit difficult in the beginning. Make a mental note to avoid him for the few, first few weeks. <laughs> I, don't need, I don't need this guy. That's it. Five hours later, fast forward, five, kid's still sitting. Person, the person is still sitting under the tree because they missed that window of opportunity when he was supposed to go into his bunk. You know that's first day, right? You got to You got to know. You get to learn these. You learn. You learn. You know the people you work with in camp pass. By the end, your mom is like, "I know better than anyone." Your mom is like, "He's mine." I'm mm. like, "Whoa, chill out." You're mm-hmm. his counselor for seven weeks, <laughs> right? Let it go. Counselors come to me, and I'm like, uh, "This is this is above my pay grade." Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. But like, we, we, we work together. You know, we, we we put him on a chair. We picked up the chair, brought him to the bunk. He looked at all of us and made a beeline straight back to the tree. And then they're like, looking at me, they're like, "What do they pay you for here?" And I'm like. <laughs> so we went to the head counselor, the best. Rav Avi is 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 the, he's now the director of, of of the campus. He's he's an unbelievable. He's he's a chush for this. He's so talented, and he's like, look, it's happened before. Make sure he's got bedding, a, sh- a, a, sh- a, a you know, really warm. Tell the security guard, and he'll be okay. He'll sleep outside. He's fine. So it was it was a co- it was a cool night. It was it wasn't it wasn't wet. I'm a hero. 
I did it. I solved the problem. Like, I'm amazing. Walking back to my bunk, I just do like a quick once over to check. Camper sitting there. And that counselor who five hours before had told me that he's in the wrong bunk is sitting there. I don't even know his name. And by the end of the summer, I'm clicking at a high rate. I know I, we, I, you get to know your staff. You get mm-hmm. to know their names, right? A name is a very important thing. And I said, dude, Go to sleep. You heard what Ravavi said. Go to sleep. And he turns to me and he has this look on his face. And he is, I don't know, he's flummoxed. He's confused. He's like, I I, I can't leave him alone here by himself. I'm like, what? He's like, he can't be by himself alone. Two nights. He slept outside until the camper was able to get back in there. He did not complain for the rest of the summer. And I went over to him and I said, this is a boy, uh, a bacher who, who did not end up in the yeshiva that he started in, mm-hmm. in Eretz Yisrael, mm-hmm. Yavin. Sometimes you have to switch yeshivas. I said, you look at yourself in the mirror and no matter what happens, no matter what happens, and again, you remind yourself that this is who you are. This is who we are. That's what we're doing at Camp Pass. That's my job. Just to remind people. So remember who we are, what we're doing, what we're doing on this planet. What are we doing here? Right? What? What? We have to ask ourselves that question every day. Like Benji, when do, I, when do I pause? When do you work out? I don't have time. So you know what I say to the client? We make time. Make the time for the things that really matter. If you're spending time being osing in things that don't really matter, then you need to check yourself. What's really true? And it's what's true for him might not be true for you. What's true? But you have to sit and sit with it. Judah talks about his boda just very openly in Camp Ask. It doesn't have to look like Bresov. It's not a Bresov thing. Bresov, like, you know, mon- monopolized. It's just like, you know, Chabad took Yacht Kislev. It's like, it's, it's, it's for everyone. It's for everyone. It's, 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 it's his boda. The Chavetz Chaim did it. He spent a few minutes a day just talking, just talking it out. It's like, what's really true? Where, where am I going? And, and there's going to be periods of time where you just don't know. And then you're going to have to be uncertain. That's okay. It's okay too. Right? Okay, now I'm uncertain. No, I need to know. I need to know. Is this the right move? In therapy, if you have a therapist that tells you what to do, that's not a very good therapist. And if somebody's looking at a therapist like, you do that to me, like you tell me what to do. Yeah, call them on it. How would I know? What do you think? What's best for you? I trust that you know what's best for you. Can I see it a little diff- differently? Yeah, I'm coming from my vantage point. But if you think that I'm going to tell you what to do, that's not my job. That's, that's, that's your Rebbe's job. Let me ask you, do you have a favorite mitzvah? Do I have a favorite mitzvah? That's a great question. I love I love tefillin. Tefillin, really? I'm crazy for tefillin. Nachi and I always get excited when they said different or new answer. Why, really? Why tefillin? Uh, I just, the shel yad, the shel rosh. Which one specifically? Do you do rabbinic? I I I I, I uh, have a, have had the schus of of uh, be, by by working with the counselors and ask here and there. I'm able to set people up. So the first shidduch that I made, shout out to that shidduch. You know who you are. Um, they gave me money. And I was like, ah, it's a, it's a lucky. You have to give money, but uh, you know, I was like, so so tired. I was like, I was like, trust me, I look good by doing this. You guys are gonna have doros yisharim. I'm telling you. I'm, and again, I need a lot more shiduchim than three. I was like, oh, you're going. I got more than three. I'm gonna need a lot more. It's like, oh, you're going to Ganeid. I'm like, again, I'm already in Ganeid sometimes, but <laughs> no. But I like, I need a lot more shiduchim than than, than, than three. But I, I, I bought I bought a pair of rabbi tam. I bought a pair of rabbi tam. Uh, you wearing them. Huh? Do you start wearing them? Yeah, I wear them. Oh. So why? why? No, it's it's a total different trip. I wear them in town. It's a total different yeah. trip. You had it from your bar mitzvah? No, when I got married. Right? It's, a to, it's a, totally different. Totally different. Because because you actually like can't run. Talk <laughs> a vote to you guys. Everyone think of this filling. Oh no no no. We, we we they're called the afternoons filling in in, in the FC now. Uh-huh. <laughs> My mother sometimes sees me like she's like she doesn't say anything. She's giving up. You know, <laughs> she's like You're like no no this no no, no no no. So, so call about no, but it's saying it's like. You chose it's, it's a it's a like we I, I didn't grow up with you know where people were bearing by the time so it's like it's like this is an active choice that I'm making and it's new it's again it's the beginner's mind of like ah it's new it's new to me yeah and again it's it's Jewish pride right the Gemara says when a a, a, a non Jew sees a Jew wearing tefillin they will fear you right it's tefillin shebarosh meaning like and Hashem's like, wearing tefillin like a bomb. <laughs> yeah and again it's it's also a mindfulness again lahaniach tefillin what lahaniach what does it mean it means to lay to rest meaning Menucha means mm. to be at peace. Like when I'm writing tefillin, it's like let all my actions be guided. I'm, let all my thoughts. And again, I, I've I've seen the idea that it's like it's above the eyes, 
Mm-hmm. Cause it's like, you're, what, what you're seeing, you see God here, you see God here. I don't see anything. I see, I see central Avenue. Hmm. I see toddies. I'll, I'll, I'll be a toddies, uh, you know, hype guy. I've never been, <laughs> I've never been to toddies. Where should I go for lunch after? So you, can you say it on air? You go to upper crust. Yeah. Okay. I'll go right to upper crust. Is it, they're, they're, they're official sponsors. Well, of, now they're going to be. Of the goal <laughs> is soul. And the, the goal is, you know, the, the, the clothing line of the meaningful people, po- <laughs> meaningful people wear meaningful clothes. <laughs> and so, um, you know, to, 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 to just, you know, I don't see God when I go right up here. It's like reminder, but also it's, it's this part of your brain where the mindfulness is happening. You're saying, that's what I'm doing. Reflexively, that's, that's here. I'm like, fight or flight is over here. Pausing and saying, what's well, really true right now? That's right here. So it's filling. So I love to fill in. I'm not putting, I'm not doing mitzvahim. I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't, you put filling on that? You're, you're Jewish? You're Jewish? No. no I'm not, not there. I'm not that's there. Not but I'm saying, again, there, it's a hassle. And, and, and Cholmoid sometimes feels like, you know, a little bit of a break. But when you're wearing it, and you've got your 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 little bit of your tattoo for a little bit. You know, hmm. it's like Jewish pride. We need to be teaching Jewish. Pr- I mean, again, that's why Rav Judas, he's, he's fire Rav Harlap and and and, and Rav Cook. So that's all you know. I've just like we're 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 cowtailing constantly again because of there's a real thing called epigenetic trauma. We are traumatized. We are traumatized people. You know, we've been through. You know, <laughs> Tisha B'avs. We've all had Tisha B'avs. And and you know we have to we have to restore that Jewish pride where we're walking around like you, you ever see a Chabad I was driving with here's a Rav Judah story. I was driving with the Chabad and we were we, not driving with Chabad. We were driving through Judah. At, we went to a wedding, a Chabad wedding. Uh, the chief rabbi of Russia is was, a, is, is a friend of Hask. Is a friend of Hask. Yeah, Rabbi Lazar. He's a friend you of Hask. Went to Moscow. No, he came to he came to uh, he came to uh, Pennsylvania. Okay. And uh, we were just talking, and so we're we're driving away from the wedding. We see this guy in his car putting us to fill in. It's like, what time is it? You know, six p.m. And we're like, yeah. And he looked at us like, what's the big deal? Of course, I'm putting on my phone like <laughs> amateurs. <laughs> we're like, yeah, put on your fill in from your car. <laughs> and he's just like amateur. I'm like, of course, I'm putting on my phone. I'm 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 fearless. I'm, I'm I fear I fear God. People, please. <laughs> and that was the Rebbe. The Rebbe was like, and 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 he created an army, mm. created an army. Again, you see a Chabad guy; he's walking around. You know, we're going to the baseball game. You know, I know you're Jewish, dude. They know you're Jewish, dude. Mm-hmm. Chabad guys, like, what's up? It's it's funny you say that with all with, of us yeah. with Camp Simcha. There's always like you know a celebrity that comes, a big sports player, a big actor, whatever it is, and all the Chabad guys were always like, uh, okay, like and and all the like non Chabad are like, come on, have you heard of them? Like, yeah, we've heard of them, but like. So what? Like Rav Judah said it last night. He was seeing shluchim from different places, and he was like, "This is my, this is my, this is my love language." I'm like, "I don't think that's a thing." But <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "He's like, what do you want? What do you want me to do? You want me to go to the NBA All Star game?" And like, what do I care? You know, maybe maybe the 80, 85 Giants or something. I don't know what team he was quoting. It's like this doesn't like these are people are are, are being most nefesh for Claudius Yisrael. Like these are the celebrities. These are the celebrities, and so yeah. I'm saying we're not we're not going to be what who whose approval are we seeking, and again when we're more comfortable in our skin we're not comfortable in our skin we feel like beholden. Why, you know? why is that? We've 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 endured a lot of, we've endured a lot of trauma. We've you know we're we're, we're not we're, whether or not you've ever experienced anti-Semitism in your life. When you go on the subway, you're you're not you don't feel good. You don't feel safe. You don't feel safe. Not anymore. I mean, like I think it's gotten worse. I'm saying we 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 had a, there was a period of time where a person was able to be able to 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 have that that sort of naivete, but like look, you gotta be you gotta be careful. And Eretz Yisrael, people walk around, they don't care. Hmm. And something nice about Eretz Yisrael, you don't care. You sit to out, wearing a keeper, you're not wearing a keeper. Who knows? Whatever. Nach, you want to ask the time sure. question? Um, How am I doing so far? You doing, you're, you're, do, doing you're doing great. okay. You're doing I mean, chances are we will put this out. Okay. Uh, no, okay. You're doing amazing. If no. you can sit down no, with one person. That. I know, I know, I know. You, I was, I was, that's called the Shailati Shur, meaning like when your client has OCD and they're like, that's you guys. I'm like, I'll give you the answer once, but otherwise you know the answer. But like, I, I don't know 100%. We need the 100%. Let it go. Hmm. If you could sit down with one person in history that's no longer around. What does that mean he's no longer around? Not alive anymore. I think it's Rav Judah's grandfather. That's the answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who would it be? Rav Weinberger's grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> who's Rav Benji's grandfather? Right. Right. Uh, I, I never, I never met my paternal grandfather. That would be nice. I'm saying, I would want. So anyone who I listen to in high school, any music I listen to, they're all dead. <laughs> but that's probably not for this show. Who am I thinking of? You're so young. 
Michael Jackson. Okay. I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I'm thinking like I'm thinking of singers that Is are that not, how you look at him? I'm thinking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm just thinking of like I don't know. I don't know what singers are dead. Uh, you know, Forget it. Pink Floyd. Anyway, okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Love you guys. You guys are great. You guys are doing good things for the Jewish people. <laughs> Edit this part for the two of you, not to make me look good. Oh, no, no. It's fine. I'm fine throwing myself on somewhere, the Somewhere of Judas chuckling. Anyway. <sighs> well, maybe it's someone from the Torah. Maybe it's it's a Gadol. Or if Judas spoke last night about how the Hashra of, of Tzadikim, of, of the Baal Shem Tov, meaning how many people knew who the Baal Shem Tov was in 1780? The Rebbe's... Lubavitcher Rebbe, you know, is another example, uh, influx, influence and, and, and ability to reach people when he passed away versus now. Have you seen the pictures of the Kinnah Shluchim? Yeah, I've been. I've been to. Okay. Have you seen, you remember, the, you remember like the first picture? The first ever, no. The first ever, the first few ever? I mean, we're talking, we're talking, you know, the amount of people could fit into this room, you know, smaller, you know, and then they need like I don't even know how they get them all into one they just get like a warehouse they get a empty warehouse, warehouse. Right. they put airplanes it's, in it's usually a, so again the tzaddik you know a person a person is 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 hasha continues like you know I've heard that the you know the Chafetz Chaim when he met the Imre Emes they needed a translator because their Yiddish dialects were so different I'm like so you know, we talk to the Chafetz Chaim or Judah was saying like what did I say to him like ah, we you know thank you <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd want I think I'd want, I think I'd want I think I'd want my wife's grandmother, um, who never got to meet the grandkids. You know, it's like so you would you wouldn't even want to sit down with them. You'd want to have your kids sit down with them. Really. Not just so she could see them. Yeah, so what are you, what are you, to, to say what you know. It's like uh, ask you like why were you doing that? What, what were you thinking? Like uh, I don't know. Is there something? Yeah, I just wanted to see her grandkids. She'd get such nachas. You know. Do you do you have? I'm sure we we like nuanced it a little or re- not nuanced we reference it a little um do you have a pet peeve or something that like that really annoys? why are you looking at me right when he said that no i'm, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm thinking about previous answers pet peeves about like what you know maybe something and just about life just the things that people are doing something that maybe didn't clients. come up yet yeah something that you see in in, in society you know, yeah. I, I i'll give you a little bit of a, of a pet peeve that, that that i think that that the the door has something to do with and also the the chinuch is that people should have things figured out. This lot, this lachats that you're feeling, the stress that you're feeling. It's like okay, everything should be figured out. You should have yourself figured out by the time you're 18, 19. You don't know anything. You don't know anything. And there's this pressure to earn, to succeed. You're like, oh, Benji's saying you don't have to earn. No, no, you have to, you have to, you have to work hard. You have to, you have to go through it. You can't skip steps. You gotta go through it. But there's this feeling like, oh my God. Like, and I also how are we defining success? How do you become a meaningful person? You got to get more very, 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 very rich people, right? That's just <laughs> it, right? That's a meaningful person, <laughs> right? That's a meaningful people, right? So the pet peeve is that is that I think sometimes our our our, our rabbanim and our teachers are 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 sort of giving this idea that you should have these things figured out by now. You should know oh, this, this, and this. and also like in terms of how a person's avodas Hashem looks, it doesn't have to look like you. That's going to destroy a lot of Talmudim and Talmudot. That you have this picture of what it's supposed to look like. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, no one ever has anything figured out, really. I'm with you, but do you feel guilty about that? Do you feel like you're lost? Do you feel like alone? Do you feel like you're the only totally. one? Totally. I mean, no, I feel you like. You look around, like, oh, everyone seems to exactly. have their stuff together. Come to my office. They don't. And neither do I. But I'm not afraid to admit that because I wrote a book about mindfulness because I want to be more mindful. I want to be more present. I want to be there for my spouse. I want to be there. I want my kids to know when I'm with them, I'm not on my phone. You know what we're doing to our kids when they see us on our phones when you talk to them? Huh? Can you tell us? Like about what? What what we're doing to our kids when we're on our phones. Here, ask me a question. Um, how old were you when One second, you... one second. Huh. I just need to just give me one second. <laughs> one second. There's something in uh... Right. What does that say to a kid? What does it do to them in here though? Like, tell what me. It... What do you think it does? Oh, I'm asking you. Like, let's say you sit down with them. Imagine, say, imagine, imagine where the person whose approval you crave more than anything. I'm 41 years old. I still crave my parents' approval. Is that healthy? It doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, who doesn't want their parents? Again, one of the biggest difficulties in therapy that I work with is when a parent isn't able to or isn't doing it enough for whatever reason. And again, there's no judgment. What gives me satisfaction? How do I how do how do I know if I'm good enough? If the person who's supposed to love me unconditionally doesn't like me, right? What are you going to do with that? 
Right? So how do you think a, feel, a person feels? Oh, I'll get it from somewhere else, maybe. But like the one person who I really want it from isn't able to give it to me. I think marriage could be very imperative in, that, in this area. I think uh, a healthy spouse, a healthy, healthy zugiut health can be really helpful with that. But like, yeah, if, if your kid feels like your work is more important, and again, children are narcissistic. They're very young. So they think that they're, it's like, it's, what did I do wrong? And we're, we're also narcissistic, unfortunately. But what did I do wrong that makes daddy like not want to be home? What did I do wrong that makes mommy like want to be somewhere else but with me? And we talk about it. We talk about wanting to do the things. And this is where the corona was really interesting because like everyone talks, you know, they talk to their therapist, they talk to their rabbonim and, and their mashpiot or the rebitsons. And he's like, oh, I really wish I could be home with my kids more. Hmm. And here's your chance. It's hmm. like, oh my God, I got to get the heck out of Dodge. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because we don't know how to be. We don't know how to just sit. We don't know how to just, you know, let things. The avoda of corona was just do nothing. I'm not a mutzlach. I'm not a successful person if I'm not constantly doing, if I'm not constantly, you know, moving. It's like, ah. Uh, it's like, if you can't sit with yourself, you're so uncomfortable in your own skin. And again, it's been cultivated. It's been developed. And you're being rewarded for that. The, the, the Facebooks and the Twitters and the, and the Silicon Valley executives are spending day and night trying to make sure that you stay on that device. And they're much better at it than you are because you're not thinking about it. You're just like, whoop, how did I get here? How did I go down this rabbit hole on YouTube? Right. You go to some strange places, right? That's <laughs> the like question these you want. Cavemen I'm not making telling you how to houses, do your job. Like Say, in the morning. how did you get to that video on YouTube? How like, far have you gone? Yeah, like no, it's just like whoa, Ifani Baolam. But it's so it's so difficult. I'm sure you see with younger generation. Yeah, TikTok. Yeah, it's a real Facebook, thing. And, and, Twitter. And so, and TikTok is I don't get it. And I see the kids doing it. It's like, duh, duh, duh. But duh, duh, duh. It's, like it's cute, it's cute. But it, first of all, forget about the negative influence on it. It's just like, how do we use our time? And again, everything in moderation. But if we don't know how to how moderate. How do you fight it? How, do, you, not, how not, do we in the Jewish community, in the we're Jewish fight, world? Now, now, now we're on a technology rant. It's, it's not a fight. It's, it's recognizing. It's, it's know your enemy. It's, 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 a re it's saying like, this is what it is. And we're not going to win. We're, we need it. It's I'm not saying fight it. I'm saying like you, you, you have you have a successful app that people should download, right? You want people to learn Torah. <laughs> you want people to learn Torah. The, I, I'm a chassid of Rav Moshe Weinberger because of the beautiful Jews who put his stuff online. I don't, I don't live in five towns. Mm. I can start listening. I'm, I'm 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 late to the game. I'm playing catch up. I'm late to the game. I love you, Rebbe. But like, come on, what are we doing? It's like, but so there's so much good on there. But like, if we don't have boundaries, we don't have limits. If we don't help. Again, we want kids to see not, oh, it's process, it's disgusting. It's like, no, take the power back, right? Moderation. And again, every single parent I know, including myself, was the biggest struggle during Corona. I was like, how can we move out? Our kids are just spending time on these devices. You know, there need to be limits. Learning how to set limits is a really good skill when you're teaching, when you're parenting is, is learning limits and learning to be Mr. Peik Bimuat and learning to be Ma'amin Bikzat. Like, I got to go big or go home, right? Pet peeves. I think that was one of Judah's ones, right? Pet peeves. Go big. Not everyone can go big. And sometimes, you know, a little bit. Like if you don't believe in a little bit, then you don't believe in anything. You don't believe in it at all. A little stuck up? Nah, come on. I'm going to give a real donation. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a check that feels good. No, nah, rip it up. Write, up something, yeah. write, write something that feels good. Like that one really hurt? No, nah, rip it up. That felt really good. No, every day. Right? That's it. We're building habits. We're building good midos. And it doesn't happen in big things. The big thing that happened, the 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 matan Torah, the first time, the the lightning and thunderbolts, and seeing the seeing the sounds and hearing the sights. How'd that turn out? Not so good, right? Didn't work out so well for us, right? So we want these big things, but you know what? Maybe maybe the backyard weddings with Davido uh, Ziff playing at them. It's a shout out for a shout out to Davido. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's the only one who plays my music. I don't <laughs> even know my songs anymore. Oh, they're three chords. I can't remember them. So. <laughs> Right, so he's like, you know, those little, those little intimate. We talk about that with the, the big. We want big, and um, Rotsim Kesef, Rotsim Kesef about Rotsim Gamkin Yishuv Adas. You know, when is it enough? You never be enough. It'll never be enough. In Ruchni is great. In Gashmi is you're, you're, we're in trouble. We're in big trouble, and it's hard. We struggle with it, but that's part of it, right? And we want that security. That's what Taivas Mamon is. You want the new car? Maybe. I don't know. I understand cars. But I'm saying, no, I just want that security. I want to feel safe. And again, if there's a leak and you can afford to pay for it, you're set. You know, it's not a problem anymore. But like, when is it enough? Again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not there. It's like, I'm not writing a parenting book because 
I don't know. The jury's still out. I think I think I'm doing a pretty good job, but you know what? <laughs> Someone's gonna play this for me in ten years. Like, good job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to finish. Your kids off. better never get nose rings. <laughs> I want to finish off. I'm just with kidding. You could get nose rings question. if you want when you're 21. <laughs> <laughs> I want to finish off with a question from my wife. Um, oh, this is a new segment. Yeah, new segment. We're gonna. Can try we have it. like music? Like, uh, what's her name? Uh, bum, 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 bum. Question from Gita. Question from Gita. It, the new segment won't be questions from my wife, but it'll be from people who. Gita, 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 Gita. On your new album, maybe? It's not hollow. It's not hollow. It'll be questions from our audience. Is um, there a possibility that somebody who does musical production and also has funding will will be behind this project? But if not, what's what number should they call? Email. Oh, you in mind? Yeah. Hask psychologist at gmail.com or Benjamin J. Epstein. No people, one knows how to spell psychologist. No one knows how to spell Benjamin J. Epstein because Benjamin Epstein, if you're listening, Benjamin Epstein, please forward me all the Gmails that I haven't <laughs> received. I don't think he even exists. But I don't how do I get it? What, what's what's your email? Benjamin Benjamin J. Epstein at gmail.com. Okay. Oh, there you go. And uh, so if you want to talk about t shirts, the next book project, or uh, my CD for Hollow. We we have some ideas for you, but but in the meantime, I have a question. Gita time. Uh, this is from my wife, and I'm gonna play it for everyone to hear. It's Corona related, but get ready. For someone who's read your book, or even for those like who haven't, uh, what can a person practically do to incorporate mindfulness into their everyday, given the current situation? Um, between COVID, the political climate, anti-Semitism, et cetera, everything that's going on, um, it's become increasingly more difficult, I think, to live in the moment. So if there's any practical um, exercises that you can recommend to keep the mindfulness going, um, that would be great. I think Ita needs to be a part of the team. That was a great question. <laughs> yeah, that was a great question. It's a, it's a great question. I think... We've always needed to be focusing on these things. It's just become much more... Pre- Someone's like, how'd you know to write this book? And I was like, <laughs> it's been around for thousands of years. I believe the Torah is is a mindfulness guide. Again, is that my taich? Maybe. You know, other, other things I won't say. But say we're constantly being... You wake up in the morning, you say thank you, you wash your hands. It's meditative, right? You say the brachos, it's meditative. Right? But we're asking for practical advice because first thing is, is is really limit your technological intake. You just got, it's just, you can't watch so much news. You can't, it'll break your heart. Don't touch your phone. For, for a bacher, for, for a guy who's going to shul, for sure. Don't touch your phone until you finish davening. Don't do it. Whatever you think you're going to see, you'll see 10 things that you wish you hadn't. Nothing inappropriate. I'm talking about just like your sports team lost. You didn't get the job. Your emails are like piling up and like, in, or you didn't, or you have no text and nobody loves you all of a sudden, <laughs> which it's not based on that. Don't touch your phone. It's just like, and you get sucked into it. It, it hijacks you. It's unethical. There's a person who worked with Google, moved out of it because it's like, it's unethical. When you get that notification, turn off your notifications. Oh my God, I could breathe again. Right, Shabbos, I could breathe again. So again, just doing those little quick fixes, but bringing meditation into your life. You know, a physical fitness regimen, finding time to journal, making time for yourself. Right, taking the long shower, right, and meditation because meditation brings you back to the present moment. Anxiety is by definition anticipatory. Uh, Joey Rosenfeld, we spoke about before. You know, he's like, you know, he he got my book. You know, he really he's he's very brilliant. I don't I don't understand what he's talking about. <laughs> he's wonderful, but he he really he hopped the book, and it was it was very nice. And he's like, you know, I taught him. We speak about that. You know how you know when we're when we're there, we're not here. So notice when yourself going there, and the way to do that, it, look, you can meditatively clean your house. You can be really washing the dishes, right? You're gonna have this aha moment. You want to be davak tashem. It's like amazing, and then you got to go back. Because most of your days are going to be Tevis days. Most of the month is going to be Cheshvan, Tevis, Shvat. Like, you got a little, you get a tuba Shvat here, right? Even Purim, it's like two days in the month. The rest of the days, you know, it's a grind, right? So we got to be able to see the good in that, in those, in those mundane. But if we're not able to bring our presence to it, whatever you bring it to, so pick an activity. If it's if it's washing the dishes, if it's if it's pushing the stroller, you know, and walking in that way, it's just bring yourself there. Or, or like you said, there, there, there are good apps. Maybe we have a Jewish meditation app. And then, you know, it's it's really doing the practice. Five minutes, 10 minutes. How long should I do it for? The longer you do it, it's like, you know, weights. The more weights you put on, the more the more you'll be able to lift. A bad session, a good session. I'm saying, are you making 10, 15 minutes yourself to just stop? 
Kavati to my Torah doesn't just mean learning Torah. It means I have made this time that I am not doing anything but Torah. From 10 to 10, 15, you know what Victor Miller says? Adam Kiyomas Baal, be dead to the world. Don't kill yourself. The Torah doesn't want you to kill yourself except for the three cardinal sins. Don't kill yourself, but when you're learning Torah, you're dead. Nobody needs me. Again, if the wife, it's an emergency, there's a, there's a way to get her. Otherwise, I got you. The phone's buzzing. Even when the phone's not, it's buzzing. You're always buzzing. Dead to the world. Start cultivating it. Start small. Build up good habits. You'll see you're a different person. Be dead to be alive. Be dead to be alive. Yeah. It's, Swag. Let's do it. I don't know. That's a little bit too morbid for me. But you know. <laughs> No, but be dead to be alive. No. In order to really live, you have to kill yourself. But not not kill yourself. Adam ki yomas ba'o. Torah is not miskaim. The Misha Mamis asked me, when I'm learning Torah, everything can be going on. I'm dead. I'm doing what I need to be doing. There's nothing else in the world. They asked the, uh, the Kabrina Rebbe, maybe, like, they asked him, what's your Rebbe's Indian? You talk about like favorite mitzvah. They, mm-hmm. The, the Hasidim used to play this game too. Right? <laughs> no, they play the game. The Rupture sir, love the sukkah or, or any mitzvah you could do with your whole body. They talk about the Kedush Levi, you know, also, also with, with Lula or Tefillin. I don't remember exactly. So they asked him, they said, what's your Rebbe's Indian? And they answered, whatever he's doing at that moment, that's it. And the, they told the Kutzker this mice, and the Kutzker was Miss Paula from the Kutzker was like, and the Kutzker was no, no garbage. Like he wasn't, no shtick, no shtick, right? The Kutzker was mama. She's like, whoa, whatever you do, that's my mitzvah. That's what I should have answered. Can I get that one again? Huh. No, I really love film. <laughs> Doctor, Rabbi, Benji, Benji. Just Benji. Dude. Just Benji. Dude. Thanks for spending time with us. I love it. You guys are doing such a beautiful thing. And I think if, 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 I, I, first of all, I believe that the three of us benefited tremendously. So I already shave. Yeah. And if anyone, and if anyone wants to be in touch about it, I, I believe that this is the Torah of Mashiach. Not because of me. Because I asked Rav, we- Rav Weinberger, who I, again, heavily lifted. So if this is something that interests you, please, I encourage you to listen to Shurim. I listen to, encourage listen to you to Rav Judah Michelle Shlita Shurim. I said, I said, Rebbe, I said, uh, would you write something? Sure. He said, you need one of those, like, you know, like Haskam the book? I said, I said, I just need like, I need a little, whatever. What, I, I, his time is valuable. Everyone's time is valuable. Mm-hmm. But he's a master. And uh, he's like, okay, so I'll just voice note it to you. And he wrote, living in the presence is a work of art that could only have been written by someone who is truly living in the present. <laughs> My dear friend, Dr. Benji has his finger on the pulse of our turbulent generation, one that is seeking more than ever a practical path of mindfulness and immunity to live by. This is a treasure. And five years of work, I got this and I got a little kiss on the cheek and it's worth it. Wow. And, and for people, where could they buy your book? On Amazon? Downstairs. Go downstairs. Oh, in any Jewish bookstore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'm listening. Not, 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 not any Jewish bookstore. It's, it's, uh. it's, it's, it's a, apparently limited editions. But, but downstairs, my, who's downstairs? What's his Bigel name? Plus? Yeah. No, but it's, what's his name? Who's, I don't, who's running this farm? Faster than this farm. Oh, he's, he's my talk. He's, he's my talk. Could they um, get it online anyway? Yeah, go to Amazon. Go to Amazon. Amazon. Go to Amazon. Beautiful. And if you have questions, email me. I, I'm Benjamin sorry. J. Epstein. Benjamin J. Epstein at gmail.com. There you go. And, and, and I'm not going to be the next step. I'm just going to open up someone's mind, I believe, enough where there's going to be curriculums. You're going to see in the next 10 years, there's going to be mindfulness being taught to your kids mm-hmm. because you need it. You need it. You need to die to live. You need to be, you need to be here, right? And believe that right now Hashem is here and that you're good. You're good. Mindfulness is paying attention, but how you're paying attention, right? Elokai neshama shenasata bi tahorahi, right? I'm good. You're good. Sometimes we do unskillful things because you know what? We get caught up. But deep down, look what you want to do with your lives. Yeah, I want, I want, I want, I want to make a parnasa and I want to, and and I want to be Marbet's Torah and I want to expose the Jewish people to people of of of, of you know. Let's look at look, let's, let's let's create Jewish heroes. You guys are beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you so much. How relaxed do you feel right now after that episode? That Mindful, really right? Good. That was really good. I got to talk lower after an episode like this. Yeah, it was super chill. So chill, and um, we're not sure when we're going to release it. But he sat down for longer for another session. Yeah, we had like a part two with Dr. Benji. Um, I think that one he did bill us for. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was actual actual therapy. Um, we just keep the cameras rolling, guys. It, it was really good. Oh, he's such a cool person, and I'm still in touch with him. I mean, a lot of our guests we, we get to still interact with. Yeah. But him, I, I on a constant. He randomly texts me. He's like. How are you doing? Like he's like great. legit. Like he really. I wake means up it. every morning. He posts on the meaningful minute app feed. He posts these great goal mm. goal of soul things. So um, we're definitely adventurous. in touch now. He's so cool. Guys, get ready for next week. Week after week. We, we, <laughs> What are we doing? Where are we pulling these out of, right? Rabbi Ephraim Goldberg from Florida. One of the one of the fastest growing Jewish communities in the world is 
Boca Raton. Yeah. It is, he has a kahila of over 900 families. That, families. That. And, and, and it, it doesn't stop growing. And he deals and he leads almost like a business. Yeah. And, and he, he gets into that with us. We won't do too many spoilers, but aside from being such a hush of person and, and really a, a big go-getter, he's maybe our most wired guest we ever had. And, and you'll see you'll see what I mean next week. And until then, thanks again to our friends at AMR Pharmacy. Guys, come on, switch over to AMR. They're the place to go. And dailygiving.org. Now is where we tell you you're, you're ending this podcast. You go to dailygiving.org. Stop everything. Go to dailygiving.org and sign up. One dollar a day. Try it for a month. See how it feels to get an email every single day. Your dollar was one of three and a half thousand dollars given to Boneolum or given to Chai Lifeline. Try it. I think you'll love it. If you don't, then you don't. But if you love it, you just got like ultimate reward in the next world. And all of you at home, don't forget that the goal is so. Ciao.